Can we power spaceships using black holes? Kinda. Exploring our galaxy is a bit problematic. Our fastest spacecraft ever, NASA's Parker Solar Probe, only travels at about 0.06% the speed of light. So it would take around 7,700 years for us to reach even our closest neighbor star, Proxima Centauri. Therefore, we need to find a way to achieve super high velocity without wasting too much fuel. Why don't we consider powering spacecraft using radiation from black holes? Natural black holes are too massive for us to harness. However, during the early stages of the universe, there might have been very small black holes known as primordial ones. Perhaps we could attempt to recreate them. In order to do so, we would need to concentrate a massive amount of energy on a minuscule point. Imagine a mass of about a million tons with a radius of a few atometers. Scientists have devised a method to accomplish this. By collecting a vast amount of the sun's energy using solar panels, directing it towards a single point, surrounding it with collectors to capture the emitted energy, and utilizing its radiation to power a spaceship. What a brilliant plan! As for the implementation, we'll have to wait and see how it unfolds. Scientists in Japan have developed artificial wombs that can nurture premature baby sharks. They help embryos to be prepared to be born properly. These artificial wombs can power little sharks for almost a year. This is much longer than their previous record of 160 days. The invention actually works. Some embryos grew from 1.2 to almost 6 inches, which is their natural birth size. Premature sharks are very vulnerable because the seawater is too salty for their little bodies. This is especially dangerous for viviparous sharks because their young ones are born without a protective shell. So what scientists did is they put them in these containers and started slowly decreasing natural fluids and gradually increasing the seawater until babies got used to the salt. The results are still not perfect though. Out of 33 embryos, only three reached birth size. However, these three are healthy and now live like any normal baby shark. They munched on some minced mackerel and shrimp and behaved typically for their age. The end goal of all this research, of course, is to develop more universal systems for wider use. Sensing a hug over the internet might soon be possible. Using eSkin, researchers at City University of Hong Kong have developed a wireless, soft eSkin that can detect and deliver the sense of touch. This creates a touch network for multi-user interaction. The eSkin can both sense touch and imitate it. We had similar technologies like that before, with VR for example, but not both of them at the same time. Here's how it works. You press an actuator, and it generates an electrical signal. This signal is converted into a digital signal by an analog-to-digital converter. Then it's sent via Bluetooth to another eSkin. The receiving eSkin converts the signal back into an electrical current and it recreates the touch sensation through vibrations. Finally, long-distance friends and family could use technology to feel each other. This technology might also help visually impaired people with directions and reading braille messages. Now, imagine being able to 3D print literal bones. This is a new technology that helps us create synthetic bones with living cells. It uses a special ink that mimics natural bone. First, you create a model, like a custom bone design. Then the printer uses ceramic ink in a gelatin bath, extruding it layer by layer. You 3D print this thing at room temperature. Then the printed bone material hardens and integrates with existing bone tissue. And voila! Still, there are some problems left to solve. For example, make sure that there won't be any immune reactions, make the material stronger, and so on. By the way, in Mumbai, there's a startup that has created helpful 3D models of organs for over 1,200 operations already. And the technology will only keep improving. The next goals are to add blood vessels to ensure nutrients and oxygen reach the tissue and develop smart materials that will change depending on the environment. 
In the future, you might have a digital copy of your body to track your health. A digital twin is a virtual model of a physical object that not only looks like the object, but also behaves like it. To be fair, it doesn't have to be a full-blown copy of you. It can be something simple, like a copy of a heart. Unlike a simple 3D model, a digital twin must show how all parts of the object interact with each other. It will show all components and their interactions, not just the shape or appearance. Looking at them will help doctors understand and improve health outcomes better by tweaking random parameters and seeing how the condition changes. For example, recently, researchers created digital twins of patients' hearts. The model showed the heart's structure and damage, things like scars and all that. They also had a simulation of the heart's electrical activity. They tried sending signals through the digital twin, looked at how it behaved, and were able to predict issues like arrhythmias. What if your walls could eat sunlight during the day and use the accumulated energy to power the building at night? Buildings literally powering themselves? Check out the energy storing bricks. They can be built in walls among regular bricks, capture extra renewable energy, stabilize the power grid, and reduce reliance on fossil fuels. They use a type of concrete that can store electricity and power devices. These bricks can turn the red pigment in standard bricks into conductive plastic, which can store and release tons of charge. Pair them with solar panels and voila, lots of clean energy, which also works even in case of power outage. And they're pretty affordable as well. People could also use them to create portable and flexible devices powered by these bricks, such as wearable electronics, sensors, or displays that attach to clothes and stuff. Potentially, these bricks could be 3D printed and mass-produced. China has developed a groundbreaking car battery that can get fully charged in just 10 minutes. Moreover, it could power a car for hundreds of miles before needing to be plugged in again, all thanks to recent great advancements in chemistry. Chemists found a way to store much more energy, the latest batteries can enable cars to travel 250 miles on a single charge, and newer versions can achieve up to 600 miles per charge. In the future, this could make electric cars much more efficient and convenient. You'd think it sounds nice and dandy, but there's a catch. If there are any disruptions due to extreme weather, trade disputes, or anything else, people will be screwed. It's not like you can go and ask your neighbor to lend you gasoline. Electric cars might not be able to get the batteries they need. Anyone who drives an electric car to work would be stuck, and the prices would skyrocket. There's also a weird type of battery that is made of sand. Finnish engineers filled a large steel container measuring 13 by 23 feet with 100 tons of sand. They then heated the sand using wind and solar energy. This method allows energy to be stored for months in a battery like this, electricity used to heat air in a special system of pipes. The hot air then flows through these pipes to warm up the sand. This generated heat can be used as energy. This is called resistive heating. Sometimes, new technologies can be both amazing and a little creepy. That's definitely the case with necrobiotics. This involves turning things that passed away into robots. It might sound like a horror movie plot, but researchers at Rice University think it will be super useful. A team at Rice University has turned a deceased spider into a robot like Gripper that can pick up objects. They do this by injecting air into the spider. Spiders use hydraulics to move their limbs, forcing their version of blood into their legs to make them extend. These necrobiotic grippers could be used in delicate tasks where traditional robotic parts might be too bulky or rough. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.